morning, this is Michael with BackToTheFutureTrading.com and today I want to talk to you a little bit about the solar cycles indicator that we've been tracking in uh, various markets including the E-mini S&P that we'll look at this morning. There is a direct correlation between the natural laws of the universe and the ebb and flow of human behavior, particularly the way the markets move. And if you do just a preliminary amount of research, you'll see that one of the cycles, one of the natural laws that W.D. Gann alluded to, um, and perhaps himself even knew about, was the ebb and flow of the energy cycles of the sun, our sun, in our solar system. Preliminary research, just a small uh, wading into the pool of discovery here, will show that the sunspot cycle has a pronounced effect on the rise and fall of the uh, United States economy. And there are other uh, portions of this worth examining, especially with regards to the unemployment rate. And looking here between 1948 and 2012, you'll see that all of the six sunspot maximums overlapped with minimums of the U.S. unemployment rate, followed by a very sharp increase. And without diving down too deeply into the how and why of it all, we can also go back and chart every one of the global conflicts on this wonderful blue planet of ours and see that people tend to lose their minds and go to war and generally want to kill each other right around the peak of a sunspot maximum. And our times of peace seem to be, times of growth, seem to be from the minimum of a cycle forwards. Well, we, uh, we've we been working with time cycles now for close to 10 years with over 4,000 customers in every major market of the world. And we've seen these time cycles ourselves play out on very small time frames, one minute, five minute, 15 minute, one hour charts. And we've also uh, devised tools to tap into these natural laws on an end of day basis. I wanted to see if the cycles from the solar uh, sunspot phenomenon had any effect on these major markets. And today I'm going to show you that we do in fact have information ranging, uh, or I should say, originating from the sunspot cycle. And what I've done here on this chart is I've actually uh, tracked the last solar high, and then behind it is the last solar minimum. So we've got a chart here where the last solar sunspot maximum is represented by a red dot, the close of that day with a red horizontal line. And then the last sunspot minimum back in 2008 located uh, on the chart as well. And what I've done is I've taken a 150% extension as represented by this green line and this green dot and a 200% extension as represented by this red line over here. So when you see this chart, the green line is a 150% extension and the red line is a 200% extension of the solar minimum and maximum dates. And some really interesting things start to happen once we project those cycles forward. And I wanted to just show you real briefly where we are using a method that I've developed now and taught all of our students here at Back to the Future Trading. Once you find the projection the 150, 200% extension, you can start splitting it into thirds over and over and over again. And um, without going too far down into the individual components, I did just want you to see what happens when you split them into thirds over and over again. And these are some notes that I drew last night. So everywhere you see a green dot or a red dot is sort of a, a major third and with the exception of the event at March 22nd which was a pattern for lower low 
selling pressure cycle represented by these green arrows. You'll see what tends to happen at every one of the green dot cycles. Okay, remember all of these lines, all of these dates are spawned, generated from the solar minimum and solar maximum of 2008 and 2014. So we had a green dot here at March 13th. We had another one at, uh, at the end of April. And then this past one that I told you about in the prior video before the launch up occurred on August, oh I'm sorry, July 12th. So in all three of those cases we saw a rise. How big of a rise? And this is important. This is what we call an exertion analysis. How far did the banks move from the close of that candle to the next red dot cycle? And approximately $73 worth of moves took place here. Approximately $60 worth of moves took place here. And from the close of this candle to where we're at so far was $41 worth of moves. So you'll notice that there's a digression. There's a divergence of sorts as we move higher and higher into this value you'll see that there's less and less steam at each one of these moves okay now we also have the sub third cycles where you see these green arrows and that one is of particular note today because that's what we're coming into we're coming into a sub third right now or a green arrow and in each of those cases I want you to see from the uh, close of the day to the high of the cycle was $25 on this cycle. From the close of the day to the high of the cycle, we're just going to move through. And I want you to see something. From the close to the high. From the close to the high. Again, this is what I call an exertion analysis. The banks move anywhere from 20, here we have 18, 19, 25, and then 40. This is sort of an outlier. So we generally expect on a green dot or a green arrow, this sub third division of the sunspot cycles, we generally expect a 20 to $25 move when we get there. There's evidence of one over here to the left too from the close to the high here's forty dollars so let's say twenty to forty dollars is expected at this ripple in time at this ripple of energy sort of like a wave that's moving towards the shore or if you throw a rock into a pond you have these ripples that move out to the outside these energy waves and so the next energy wave is coming and it carries a twenty to forty dollar uh, energy exertion with it. So let's just take a look real quick and see where that might take us. And so I will put a uh, a box right here. And just if t if today was the day that it started from twenty dollars would take us from four seventy one to four. 91. Okay, that would be the minimum exertion analysis before the next red arrow, which occurs coming up here where you see my red dot. So we have this next period of time to get up to at least $20 above us. If it goes the full Monty, if it goes the full $40, that would take us to here. Okay, 25, 13, 25. So our exertion analysis of prior sub-third ripples seems to indicate that between today and the next sunspot cycle red dot, we're expecting a move up from this area up into this area. Does that make sense? Okay, 
there's another thing that we can look at too that involves the support and resistance areas of time. Gann talked about this concept over a century ago and W.D. Gann said, if you find time cycles where tops and bottoms are forming, you'll also find support and resistance levels where bottoms and tops will form as well. And you'll notice that I've been using these red and green lines to annotate the closing prices of these ripples, the thirds and the minor thirds of these splits. And there's a wonderful rule in time resistance that says, hey, if there's no other lines, if there are no other lines above you or below you in a downtrending market, then we can look at the last gap. We can look at the last gap and project it. So I'm going to show you here the last gap as represented by this highlighted rectangular box. And if I take that box and I project it, upwards I want you to see where that gets us okay it takes us right into this other box at 250708 area so somewhere between 08 and 13 now that's quite a tall order to ask the market to move especially at all-time highs but that is the geometry of the situation that we find ourselves in. Again, it's not a guarantee that it will work, but using the information that we have on, on the screen available to us, we see that there is a pattern of behavior in relation to these times. There is a pattern of behavior in relation to these times. We can see, again, when there is a gap, we can take these sub thirds and we can project that on top of our gap we can come back and put the behavior pattern that was expected on that date on those sub thirds in this case an up triangle and a down triangle and we can actually measure how far did the market move when it was time for that move and so looking at that leads me to believe that there's a good chance this is the week we hit 2,500, okay? Now, there's something else worth noting about the E-mini S&P, and that is, in particular, that we're headed into a major down cycle. We're headed into a major down cycle. So in each of these cases, I want you to see that there was a pronounced down effect that the market did move down when we got to the sub third okay so in each of these cases you'll see that there was a drop twenty five dollars down there was a drop twenty five dollars down there was a drop twenty eight dollars down so in each of these cases coming into the next red third this next red sub third which is what we're headed into now there was a twenty five dollar drop down okay so if we get into the twenty five oh eight twenty five hundred area i expect us to come back down down into the seventy fives so retrace back into this area at least minimally one last thing I want to take note of in relation to these support and resistance lines there's uh, there's something hanging out there and here's what I want you to see you'll notice that when a time cycle spawns one of these lines uh, we call them open price lines the market is drawn to that line like a magnet there's an energy associated with that line and the banks will drive price down into that line to capture that energy think of these as rest stops or gas stations petrol stations refueling stations of energy left behind horizontally at an energized time cycle so when we see a green dot the close of that bar spawns 
a line or a price where energy is continuing to move forward horizontally. And when we come back to that line, it energizes the market and a bottom is formed there, or a top can be formed there. And sometimes multiple times, as you see here to the right. Well, in every one of the cases but two, the market retraced back to these levels. So follow with me and you'll see this red line was retraced back to and bounced off of. Not once, not twice, three times, four times, five times. This green line was bounced off of and retraced away from, as well as returned to here. This red line again was returned to and touched. This green line was spawned, bounced off of, and pushed away from. It actually happened twice. Now, here's where things get really interesting to me. This date right here, this red sub-third, and this green triangle sub-third form these two lines. And they're occurring approximately 2392 to 2395.50. I want you to notice that the market was never has never come back to this rest stop yet. These two lines are virginal in that they haven't been touched. Now that's going to be important. If you'll notice here one more second, it happened a second time. This red dot spawned a red line. The red line was retraced to and bounced off of. This green dot, this green arrow rather, spawned a line. It was retraced back to and there was a reaction off of it. However, this green dot right here and this red arrow spawned two more lines. And I'm going to actually physically draw one so you can see the close of that candle right here on July 12th. The market never came back to those levels. So the banks have purposefully left this fueling station behind. There are two fueling stations here, two lines, 2390s and up here at the 2440s, where reserves are waiting to be deployed. And they've left these behind on purpose. Okay, That tells me, after we hit this 2500 level, we have the ability to drop all the way down to 2439, 60 points or 600 points on the Dow, as well as even lower down here into 2393. So there's about a 100 point drop on the ES, 1000 point drop on the Dow waiting. Uh, and these are areas when you get to them, remember when you saw this video because they will be opportunities for purchasing for short-term volatile moves back up at that point. Okay, so what do we take away from this? We take away that the sun has a lot to say about how people behave. Our environment, our external environment, is controlling our internal behavior and psychology, and the facts are sort of out on that, and we've mastered that. In fact, I think we're one of the only companies available to retail traders that still teaches this and provides that information to people. Number two, we can directly translate that information into time-based behavioral patterns. And we can very easily locate the, the dates where these waves of momentum are catching up with the market and launching it progressively higher. Uh, the wonderful part of this progression is that it's predictable and we also know that there's an element of self-fulfilling prophecy to it if I know this is happening the banks know this is happening and they're leveraging it and keeping track of it as well we also have an internal geometry that forms around these prices in terms of structure, in terms of support and resistance as well. And that support and resistance structure allows us also to understand projections relative to how the market may move. And while it's no guarantee, it's better than staring at a chart and throwing uh, a pair of dice out onto the table 
and putting it all to chance. When you focus everything down, you'll see that more often than not, using these analysis techniques uh, reveals a behavior pattern that was predictable that we could have taken advantage of with minimum risk. And that's all this is. It's a game of risk, maximizing profitability and minimizing the amount of money required to test an area to see if you're right. Please leave your comments and uh, ideas and thoughts below, any markets you'd like to see me analyze as well. Please like and comment as well as subscribe so that other people can find this and uh, we can share the good news of time cycles with the rest of the retail trading world. I'm Michael with Back to the Future Trading. I hope you have a prosperous day. Let me know if this is helping. Michael at backtothefuturetrading.com or for a personal one-on-one -on -one, uh, demonstration of our products and tools to help you become a more confident and profitable trader.